Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys for tuning in. And if you guys are new here, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I make videos about the NBA and I post every second day, so I'm very consistent. And yeah, if you like this video, make sure to like and comment so we can get this video onto the algorithm and expose it to other people who like NBA basketball. And yeah, aside from that, let's get into this video. Today I wanted to talk about something that happened on Saturday. So Saturday the Brooklyn Nets played the Golden State Warriors and the Nets absolutely blew out the Warriors, right? And James Harden um, had 16 assists, right? Partially this was due to, you know, Kevin Durant coming back, so having more scorers. But still, after the game, in a post-game interview, Kyrie Irving was asked a question along the lines of, what do you think about James Harden's propensity or ability to distribute the ball that way? you know, in order to get 16 assists. And Kyrie said something which I think was very interesting. He said that him and James Harden had talked and reconciled the guard positions, the one and two guards. And he said that him and James came to the arrangement that James would be the point guard from now on. So James would bring up the ball and he would be the main distributor for the Brooklyn Nets. And honestly, I love it. Take a look at this video. Performance tonight. Uh, just staying consistent. I feel like he's just been doing a great job of just managing the point guard role. You know, we established that maybe four days ago now. I just looked at him and I said, you're the point guard and I'm going to play shooting guard. And that was as simple as that. So he's been taking control of the responsibilities and doing an incredible job. And it just makes my job easier to just go out and play, um, play free and just make plays. So it's a luxury. Just wanted to continue it. So as you just saw, that's Kyrie saying him and James Harden came to a conclusion, a reconciliation that he would just play the two guard and James would be the functioning point guard for the Brooklyn Nets. And this is a decision that I love, right? Essentially just them switching their roles and their positions. Because as you know, James Harden is actually a shooting guard, even though he plays the point guard very well. He played the point very well when he played with Chris Paul, uh, they would kind of alternate. So he's a really, really, really good point guard. And I think that's due to him having a high basketball IQ. He's a very smart basketball player. And so that allows him to have the ability to score and also see passes that normal guards, you know, wouldn't see. But yeah, I love this reconciliation, this, you know, coming together and understanding each other. I love it. But I don't know if Kevin Durant and Steve Nash, the head coach were notified of this arrangement or if they talked it out and said, you know, that's yeah, okay to go because, you know, when you make a huge arrangement, a big adjustment like that, you kind of have to run it by the other star, right? Like you can't just cut out Kevin, you know, and not tell him what's going on. And you also have to let the coach know. You have to let Steve Nash, Mike D'Antoni, you have to let them know because these are the guys that draw up plays, right? These are the guys that draw up plays for situational basketball. I hope and and I don't know if they ran it by Steve Nash or not because this is very important. It's not just something you gloss over. This is really, really important. This is your man. This is the guy that has the keys to the offense and this is the guy that facilitates everything else. So it's kind of very important. So at the very least, you kind of have to run it by him and let him know, hey, I think this is what's going on. I think James, it would be best if James brings up the ball and I just play the two. I feel much better that way. I feel more comfortable that way. You know, it just makes my life easier and he's okay with it. So he can go back to the drawing board and, you know, draw a new place. But with that being said, I actually I actually like the move. I love the move. I think James Harden should have been the point guard the minute he stepped foot in Brooklyn from the get-go. Mainly because James Harden's clearly the better player. He's better than Kyrie Irving as a basketball player, but also James Harden's just better at Kyrie's position than he is. Like James Harden's a really, really, really good point guard and 
to me, it's been evident ever since in 2015 when Mike D'Antoni actually had him play point and he almost made top five in assists that year. He just understands the game really well. And in fact, I wonder if Mike D'Antoni had anything to do with it or if he advised that this is the way we should go to maximize this offense because they have a lot of firepower on this team. They are very lethal. Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving on the same team, that's an offense I wouldn't want to face on any day. So an offensive-minded assistant coach like Mike D'Antoni, who coached James Harden for almost for the better part of nine years, and who also coached the current head coach of the Brooklyn Nets, Steve Nash. If you don't remember, Steve Nash played for the Phoenix Suns all the way back in 2007 and in he played for the seven seconds or less offense and that team was coached by Mike D'Antoni and both the teams that Mike D'Antoni coached, the Houston Rockets and the Phoenix Suns, both had the best ratings in terms of offense if you go look up the numbers. But yeah, so I wonder if he had anything to do with it because he has to realize that this is a very, very loaded offense and you could do a lot of damage with this and just if you switch up the personnel and switch up the roles, there's a a lot of good that could come from it but this adjustment makes the Nets even better they, it makes them even more lethal than they already are because now everybody's playing the position they feel they need like Kyrie said in the video it just makes my life easier because he's always been a two guard Kyrie Irving is a shooting guard disguised as a point guard he's a shoot first guy and he's not that great of a distributor if you look at Kyrie's assists Kyrie even though he's a point guard he's never ranked like top 10 in assists but James Harden's done that multiple times even though James Harden's a shooting guard. And I've been saying for years now that James Harden's one hell of a passer. If I can name like top five passers in the league, James, James Harden would definitely be up there. Up there with Rajon Rondo, with Ricky Rubio, with you know, LeBron James. He's a tremendous talent when it comes to passing and scoring. He's just a really good offensive player. Not only now do you have two players who can create their own shots in Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, you also have to look over your shoulder for those lobs coming from James Harden to DeAndre Jordan. And if that's not on open, you know, James Harden can still take it to the rack himself. Mind you, he's still a really, really good basketball player. He's a top five in the league still, so he has no problem scoring by himself if need be. But now, they have so many options, you know? They, you have Kevin Durant, who's just a grim reaper, who just can get anything he wants, can get any shot he wants, and you have Kyrie Irving, we know what he brings in terms of offense, in terms of creating his own shot, in terms of the shots that he can make. Untucked Jersey Kyrie is a different breed, and we know that. So when push comes to shove, these guys can make it count. And also, the thing with James Harden too is, during his tenure in Houston, one of the main problems that he always used to have was, he could score. Like he was a good scorer. He never really had that guy that could create his own shots and make his own shots and score, right? The one year he had that with Chris Paul, they almost went to the finals. They took the Golden State Warriors to seven games, right? And the thing with him is because he never had that, James plays so hard and he plays every game. Like James, if you look it up, James is kind of an Iron Man. He plays every game. He almost, he damn near plays almost 82 games in every season. And the thing with that is by the time playoffs roll around, he is exhausted. He is tired and he just can't do it in the playoffs. Right? And now with this, he doesn't have to exert that much energy anymore because he has, he has these two really, really, really good players next to him and he can just distribute it to them all season long and then in the playoffs, if they are a little bit tired, he can just take that by himself, right? So I like the dynamic that the that this offense has, you know, this switch up and this just kind of understanding that Kyrie and James Harden are doing in a backcourt and being like, you are better at this, why don't you do this, why don't you do this? It really seems as if they're putting their egos aside for winning. Because James Harden is doing things I didn't think he would be doing. He's taking less shots, he's voicing his concern when, when Kevin Durant isn't able to play. It tells me that he is ready to win, he wants to win and he really cares about winning because he's had the individual accolades, he's had the scoring champion, he's had the MVP, he's been to the conference finals, he wants the one thing that he doesn't have, which is a championship, with which both of the other dudes have. So he, I can tell he's really putting his soul into it and he really cares about this and I really like it and I hope this team goes the distance and with these two brilliant offensive minded head coaches, Steve Nash and Mike D'Antoni and these two tremendous talents in, in Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, I really 
think the Brooklyn Nets are the team to beat. But yeah, those are just my thoughts and what I think this means for the Brooklyn Nets. This adjustment makes them even better. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you think that Kyrie should still be the point guard? Do you, how do you think this is gonna work on a defensive end? Obviously, I think on a defensive end, um, nothing has to change. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And aside from that, I'll see you in the next video.